but just moving overseas as a military spouse in general, I would warn anyone to brace yourself for just kind of how you may be treated. I feel like I'm treated as like this 1950s, 1940s spouse where it's just like your main role is to be the spouse. What's going on y'all? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shalisa if you're new here and y'all I was really back and forth on the fence about shooting this video y'all for a while. Like I had thought about filming this like back when we were in Virginia, but I was like, ah, you know, it's not valuable. Nobody's gonna wanna hear about it. But I recently had a situation happen to me while I was starting my new job here in Italy. And throughout the entire ordeal, I kept saying to myself, I wish somebody would have told me all of this information so I can make the right decision for myself and my family. So that was kind of the catalyst to say, you know what, let me go ahead and make this video. So let's just jump into it, y'all. First things first, I'm not an HR representative and I am sharing my personal experience. So I'm not speaking on behalf of the federal government. I'm not telling anyone what to do. I am sharing my personal experience and hopefully this helps anyone who is moving to Italy or moving overseas. This is just my experience, y'all. Gotta put that out there. Put that disclaimer out there, y'all, because people be trying to come for you if you don't say the right thing. So putting that out there. For anyone who's new and just finding my channel, welcome. Um, I live in Naples, Italy. I am in Naples, Italy because my husband is active duty military, but aside from him being active duty military, I have had a going on 10 year career in the federal government. I've been working in the federal government since I graduated from college. When I got my job, I got my job on my own accord, separate from my husband. I was in the federal government well before I marry my husband. So when we decided we were going to move out here to Italy, we both already knew that we wanted to maintain a two income household instead of a one income household. And so that led me to applying for jobs. Now, prior to applying for jobs, y'all, something that you may hear a lot if you are moving to Italy or any you know, base overseas is SOFA. Let's talk about SOFA, y'all. So, SOFA stands for Status of Forces Agreement. And again, just summarizing it in my own words, SOFA is an agreement between the United States government and the host government that we have bases in or that, you know, military members are gonna be stationed in. And depending upon what country you and your family are going to be stationed at, SOFA may look a little bit different. So for me in Italy, the SOFA here is different than the SOFA in Germany. So putting that out there for you know anyone who may be getting stationed in Japan or um, Germany or I don't know, South Korea, it, it's different. It has little nuances, but one of the big things a lot of people get hung up on and focus on is the fact that SOFA puts limitations on the type of employment military spouses are allowed to have. And from what I've read, from what I've heard, Italy has some of the most strictest SOFA laws. And in the nutshell, for the longest, it has been practically like, look, you cannot, you can't work in the local economy. So if you are coming here and you are a professor, at a university back in the States and you want to teach and do some classes for a college here in Italy, that is not allowed. You cannot work in the local economy. If you have a business um, back in the States, it limits you from being able to operate and run that business here in Italy. If you had a bakery and you're like, you know what, I want to sell my baked goods out here in Italy and continue my bakery here in Italy, that SOFA impacts that. For a very long time, it wasn't until like literally recently, like it is October now, I think the rules change like in August, early September, for a very long time, SOFA wouldn't even allow you to telework here 
in Italy for an American company. Like that's how restrictive SOFA has been. Like legitimately, people would have jobs back in the States and their jobs were like, yep, you can telework, you can go overseas, boop, boop, boop. And they were like, no, you can't do it. And I, one of the few reasons that this, these restrictions were in place is, you know, visa purposes. When you come overseas as a military spouse, you're coming on a visa that basically says that I am here accompanying, you know, a military personnel. And if you want to come over here and work, that will require you to have a different type of visa. It will require you to have a work visa. So that's a part of the reason I've read and researched that like some of it is taxes. You know, if you are teleworking and working for a American company and you're over here in Italy, you know, you're not paying taxes in their economy and contributing to their governmental systems. Again, that's what I've read, that's what I heard. I can't 100% quote it, but again, that's a part of what plays into it. So a lot of the times, a lot of people move over here to Italy and they end up not being able to work because of SOFA. And I'd like to say, I take real issue with the fact that up until now, SOFA restricted telework when, from what I've read, SOFA, like the SOFA agreement between Italy and America was created in the 1950s, 1950s, 1960s. Who was teleworking back then? How y'all restricting telework? And that wasn't even a thing. Like, let's not get it twisted. Like, we had telework for like two or three years and these folks now are slowly trying to take that away now and it's the year 2023 going on 2024 so who was teleworking back in the 60s and 50s and 70s just let me know just let me know but i bring that up because i have read in some you know facebook groups that anytime you ask somebody to see the actual sofa agreement you can't find it, no one can produce it, but they will swear by, you can't do this, you can't do that because of SOFA. And so oftentimes a lot of spouses get over here and their job options are very, very limited. There was a recent article that was written by Stars and Stripes and it talked about military spouses and the limited like employment options, you know, coming overseas to support their spouses. If I can find it and I can remember before uploading this video, I will make sure to link it below because it was a really good read and it wasn't just specific to Italy. It talked about spouses in Germany and all over the place. Like SOFA is a very impactful thing when it comes to your career options overseas. But one of the career options that you do have at your disposal is entering into the federal government, y'all, and becoming a government federal civilian service member, like myself. I think because the government and the military understands that being a military spouse, there's a lot of you know uncertainty and where you're gonna go. And the government does try to put some measures in place to give military spouses a little leg up in order to get um, a job in the federal government. I will say, if you are not someone who is already in the federal government, um, and you work in an industry that is a little specialized, it could be, it can be very difficult to get in. Um, for years, I've been working in the federal government and the, the running, you know, saying was, it's hard to get in, but once you're in, like, you're pretty much golden. So getting in can be tough and getting in into, and trying to get a position while you're overseas adds an a, additional layer of difficulty because, you know, the job pool is very, very small. Also, if you're someone who has a background in and a long career in journalism and you are coming from DC, you're doing journalism in DC and you know Capitol Hill, all that type of jazz, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm moving to Japan and I wanna continue doing journalism and you're limited to only federal government jobs because of SOFA, it can be 
really, really difficult to get your foot in the door. Not impossible, but it can definitely be difficult because a lot of these positions, they're looking for specialized skills. It's either a lot of the positions you'll find on USA Jobs are either like very, very specialized, like someone who has been working in this line of business for years or just very, very open, broad, general, like, we could teach anyone and they can do it. Um, and so it can be a little difficult, but one of the things that we do, are afforded as military spouses is spousal preference when we are applying for federal government jobs. So when you are applying for a job in the federal government, if you, have, if you come from a certain background, you can get certain preferences to help kind of skip the line. So general rule of thumb is like, if you're a veteran and you've served before, you get veterans preference. If you're a military spouse, you get spousal preference. If you're a civilian government worker, you, you know, get that. And it goes in that order of like, veterans get looked at first. If there's no veterans that meet the requirements and qualifications for the position, then we'll go to military spouses. If there's no spouses, then we'll go to civilian federal employees who are already working for the federal government. And then like, if we've gone through all the preferences and we can't find anyone, then we'll just look at whoever applied in the general public. So that's kind of how the preference is. So if you're a military spouse applying for a job, you're literally like the second group in the hiring package so that is such a plus right there in itself just because you use spousal pr preference doesn't necessarily mean that you are automatically going to get a job you still have to have some of the qualifications to be able to do that job in order for them to hire you so just want to make that clear there are some cons <laughs> to spousal preference and i have learn those cons because when I first enter, entered into the federal government, I applied just like anyone else. I was a part of the general PAC, general public. And then once I got into the federal government, I've always gotten like civilian preferences or, you know, I moved from one office, from an East Coast office to a West Coast office. So I could just kind of talk to a manager and say, hey, do they have any openings? So I've been able to really leverage my civilian federal government employee preference but this was the first time that i use spousal preference and i'm upset y'all <laughs> i'm upset i am not happy about that but um that's just how the cookies crumble this is not me trying to dissuade or discourage anyone from using the military spousal preference. I think it's a great benefit for military spouses and I think anyone should use it. For me personally, and in my experience, it would have been better for me to come to Italy without using spousal preference and just coming as a federal employee. That is for me personally, I'm only speaking for myself, but again, for myself personally, it would have been better for me to come as a government worker. And I say that because there are a lot of benefits that as military spouses, we don't get when we work overseas as a spouse. As a military spouse, one of the things that we don't get is oftentimes if you're moving overseas as a civilian, they give you a moving allowance. They'll pay for you to move over here. So if you move over here as a military spouse, they don't give you that money because you are tied to your spouse's order therefore the military is paying for that makes sense I get it you know trying to save money I'm not mad at that something else that we don't get as spousal hires is the max leave so if you come overseas as a civilian government worker you get to max out on your annual leave at 360 hours and anything over 360 hours is use or lose. However, as a military spouse or hire, you only get to max out at 240 annual leave hours. Everything else is use or lose. So the way my mind thinks of it is, if I had came over here as a government civilian worker, I would have been able to accumulate more leave. So that's another thing we miss out as spousal hires. Third is uh, along with annual leave, as a civilian hire, you get home leave. And after looking up home leave, home leave is essentially like separate from your annual leave, 
the government will give you homely which is leave that you could use to go back to the states and visit your family so if you come over here as a civilian hire you get home leave to just go back to the states and see people i guess the military or the government thinks that because we're over here with our spouses that we don't have any other family members that we want to visit and therefore they don't feel like it's necessary to give military spouses home leave i don't know it's ridiculous and very frustrating as you can hear in my head um but yeah that's something that we don't get as military spouses i like my office um i like the people i work with so i don't have any complaints i'm going to rock out with them until it's time for me to roll out but if you are working in an office that you're not fond of you don't like the people you don't like the management you don't like the work you can apply for another job but you don't get spousal preference so once you've used your preference you don't get to use it again in that same region and the last couple of things kind of go hand in hand if you're hired as a military spouse you have to move with your spouse and that's not a negative thing because the assumption is you love your spouse and you're always going to stand beside your spouse and you're going to move with them regardless however like in the past when prior to my husband and i getting married we were engaged we were stationed in seattle and in order to go back home and to really prepare for our wedding and to get started with work i decided to leave like three or four months before him and i was able to do that because i was not married to him one therefore i was not yeah, i didn't have spousal preference but i was already working in the federal government so i had connections and people i could call to you know get back to working at my old job and i was able to go ahead of him but because i'm hired as a spouse i don't have that option let's say my husband and i were going to get stationed in japan after italy if i found a job and they wanted me to work immediately i couldn't take that job up until my husband's orders were up here in italy so that kind of complicates things again if you're someone like myself like prior to getting here to italy i was very proactive you know proactively applying and things of that sort and i don't know you know i a part of me wants to be proactive with wherever we go next however being i was hired on spousal preference it doesn't make sense when you are hired as a military spouse you don't have any return rights to a job so this may not be applicable to anyone who is applying for the federal government and has never been in the federal government but for someone like myself i was already in the federal government before i came out here um and it was something i always heard about return rights return rights and return rights are essentially like if you had a job in the state and you decided you were gonna go get another job overseas if you have return rights that means when it's time for you to go back to the states wherever you came from they have to find you a position at the same pay rate that you were at when you left and so a lot of my co-workers they have return rights because they came as civilians and i don't so when it is time for us to leave and transition out of italy i'm pretty much on my own trying to look for a job now the good thing is um my i won't have a break in service because most times if you're a military spouse they'll put you on leave without pay and you won't be getting paid but it'll at least be like okay well you still have a job you know you're just not getting paid so that's one less stress if i had return rights it'd be like well at least i don't have to worry about you know finding a job it's just a matter of like when the start date is so these are all the benefits and things that if i had came out here as a civilian worker like i was i would be old they would they would be you know benefits and things that are mine and because i came as a spouse you know again i i don't we we they strip us of a lot of a lot of those benefits and i don't understand why <laughs> it's you know i sit here and i think about it and i shrug my shoulders but a part of i'm shrugging my shoulders thinking about some of the things like some of the things like not paying for the move it makes sense i get it the no return rights it makes sense i get it 
but like the home leave and the you know maxing out the cap on annual leave those are things i don't understand if someone can educate me please please educate me but it just seems like it seems like a slap in the face to me but i digress I will say my hiring process was very, very chaotic. When I was going through the hiring process, being proactive, I applied for the job before I left the states. Um, and I applied as a spouse and a federal government worker. Um, I got picked up on my cert the first time as a military spouse. I got hired um, and my job offer was rescinded because that's something else I didn't mention. If you were going to be applying for spousal preference, you have to be where you are applying when you ask for the, the preference. So I my job offer was rescinded because I was applying and I was still in Virginia and when they offered me the job they said well technically you don't qualify for spousal preference because you're not here in Italy so they rescinded the job offer but because I was a federal government worker and I had applied hey I'm also a federal government worker they said well we can reevaluate you and you can move on to the next pool of um, hiring as a federal government worker which would have been great because again i would have been able to acquire all the benefits i just listed um and then some so i was super excited about that and i ended up getting the job again and i was under the impression that i was going to get hired as a civilian government worker but they ended up still processing me as a military spouse and it has been a chaotic frustrating traumatizing experience um, throughout the entire onboarding process I am still trying to comb out some of the kinks and the errors that have transpired with me you know entering into this new position with all that because again this was technically my first time using sponsor preference if i knew what i know now back then i would have really pushed to come in as a civilian i already knew the system as a government civilian worker and now that i'm like process as a military spouse i'm having to learn small little nuances and things that i just would have preferred to stay a civilian and not like i would have forfeited my spousal preference and again this is just speaking from my experience i will say that this hiring experience and it, it's not even just specific to the hiring experience but just moving overseas as a military spouse in general i would warn anyone to brace yourself for just kind of how you may be treated i feel like since moving over here to italy i am treated as like this 1950s 1940s spouse where it's just like your main role is to be the spouse what you want your goals your desires how you envision things to be like that we don't really care about that like first and foremost you are a spouse anything other than that is really not of a high priority to us i don't you know i don't mean this to be rude or anything like that but i have felt this way and i work with other people who have been military spouses their husbands um were in the military and they went through similar experiences and they kind of phrase it as like it sometimes feels like when you're a military spouse overseas like you feel like a second class citizen like i feel like at times the system doesn't separate you from your spouse it's like we're a package deal and that's kind of how we're processing things and to a certain extent i get it however it can be very frustrating it can be very hurtful it can be a slap in the face you know to put so much time and effort into getting your education and building your career on your own accord and then you know because of your spouse's career now it's like everything that you have you know worked hard to acquire and obtain doesn't matter like the only thing that matters is that you are married to your military spouse i would also say just given my you know chaotic experience with getting my job over here in naples just be 
just ask the right question y'all so don't be do not be afraid to ask questions when it comes to hr if something doesn't read right if you don't understand something ask question y'all they will have you accept a job and then not tell you all the little nitty-gritty details of what you're accepting and the things that you're like tossing away so make sure you are asking the right questions like hey you know what are the leave benefits what am i entitled to is there anything that because i'm being hired as a military spouse i will not be entitled to like lay the land out because there's a possibility that if you're coming in here as a military spouse you're probably going to be working with other civilians who are not military spouses and i know for me i can only speak for myself it is very frustrating and disheartening to think that like i'm working with individuals who are afforded more benefits as far as like leave and things of that sort that i'm not afforded and again I understand that the idea is, well, you were able to jump the line and you beat out some people um, who would have gotten this position if, you know, we looked at civilians. But again, I just, I like to be aware of what I'm walking into. Cause when I'm caught off guard, it makes me feel like I'm being played and I don't like to be played. So in conclusion, y'all, be just be aware ask questions whether it's with sofa whether if you're gonna try to get a job in the federal government just ask questions be mindful know what you are signing up for thank you all so much for watching this video y'all it's late here it's like almost midnight here and i'm filming this video but it's been kind of a long time coming and like i said like it's been on my mind to record this video and just let you all know what to you know be prepared and this was the time that i decided to make it so thank you all for watching comment below if you have any questions and make sure you subscribe y'all because you're not going to want to miss what is coming up on my channel and as always i will see you in the next video below